Hi and welcome, Vivian here again and I'm delighted to welcome you to this first step in our journey navigating change with intention. In this video we are going to be looking at the power of story. I'm going to be sharing with you the story of Grown Whale, our inspiration behind the MAP program and this class navigating change with intention. I'll share with you some of my story about how I've created intentions and how I led to developing the MAP program. And we're going to start to look at creating your intentions. So before we get started, I'd like to invite you to just take a moment. You might want to press pause or you might want to continue listening. I just would like you to take a second to tune into yourself. So wherever you are, you might want to sit up straight. You might want to put your feet on the ground so you feel really grounded. I would invite you to put your left hand on your heart to maybe close your eyes and start to breathe into yourself. So maybe take a big deep breath and just let it all go. And you might want to take a couple of more deep breaths. And then a final one. Really tune into yourself, get really grounded and present within yourself. Take a moment to recollect what does intention mean to you? What is your definition of intention? What brought you to participating in this course? What were the intentions that you've set in the past? How did these intentions come to you? How did they work out? What did you learn from these intentions? What would you like to do that's different? What are you seeking? What are you seeking from this course that would inspire you to move more forward with your intentions? If you are on this course, then there must be something within your intentions that doesn't feel quite in alignment. That you might not feel that you're achieving all that you are capable of achieving. You might want a different way forward. So just really settle into yourself and reflect on your own truth about intention. Lindsay Gibson states that intention is the raw beginning of our capacity to imagine those things we want so badly. When you have intention, it means your wish is becoming conscious. It creates a drive to reach the intention. So you create the actions that move you towards your desires. So part of this, of course, is really about developing, you know, an awareness of your intentions, an awareness of those desires and starting to make the necessary changes to allow space for those intentions to manifest. Grawn Whale was a queen from the west of Ireland. She lived during a time of economic and social uncertainty, not very dissimilar from the times that we are currently living in. And she took a stand. She wanted freedom for her people. She wanted freedom for her lands. And because she took a stand, she ended up being bullied. She spent time in prison. She was being hounded. And she decided that enough was enough. And that if she wanted change, if she wanted to change her story, she was going to have to speak to the boss. That was Queen Elizabeth I. So she sailed from the west coast of Ireland to meet with Queen Elizabeth at Greenwich Palace, not very far away from where I'm recording this on-demand workshop. And this meant risking taking her life in her own hands because she was technically a pirate, so technically she could have lost her head or been hung. She felt that the risk was worth taking. She wanted peace for her lifetime. And that's all I'm going to say about Grown Whale at the moment, ex except that she inspires for me female leadership. Jeanette, a Dutch coach, talks about female leadership in terms of being grounded, being present, seeing the bigger picture, knowing what we think, understanding how we feel, being conscious of what's going around, going on around us, and yet at the same time making conscious decisions that are true to the nature of who we are. They are true to our intention. 
And that is all I'm going to say about Grace at this time, except that she inspires for me and for my company what female leadership looks like. She's an archetype of female leadership. Jeanette, a Dutch coach who I follow, describes female leadership and female empowerment as being about being grounded. It's about seeing the bigger picture. It's about being grounded and rooted, seeing what you think, reflecting on how you feel, watching what's going on around you, and still at the same time, making conscious decisions that align to the truth of who you are. Whether you are male or female, we all have male and female energy. We currently live in a world that's very much action orientated, do, do, do. And this is about taking a step back and embracing our female energy to look at the wider picture, to look at where we are, look at how we feel, how we think what's going on around us, and then consciously make choices that drive us towards our intentions. The issue is that to create an intention, we must have clarity about our focus, have clarity about our personal story in that drive towards those intentions that we have set. So I'm assuming it's okay. I'm going to share with you a little bit of my story and how I've set intentions in the past. So 16 years ago, a long time ago, um, I lost my boyfriend, my father and my job all within a period of 12 weeks. I was very, very unhappy. I was very overwhelmed. I was overweight and I was very shell shocked. It had been a long time coming and then when it happened, everything just was gone. And I didn't feel supported. I didn't feel that I had what I needed to move me through my grief there at the present time. So I became very conscious that I was going to have to take action. And, set, and so I set myself three goals over three years. The first goal was to learn to horse ride or to go back horse riding. It had been something that I had done when I was a child. My father had encouraged it. He'd always come along to watch me go horse riding. And I felt very much emotionally connected with horses. And particularly at that time, having felt so much loss, I kind of felt a bit more comfortable around animals than I did around people. So it was about giving myself some emotional engagement about supporting myself emotionally. The second goal that I set in the second year was to go and revisit learning to play golf. I had played hockey at school, I had tried golf at school, I had played pitch and putt, and it had been something that I had been introduced to more formally when I had started my career. And so I decided I wanted to go back playing golf it seemed professional it seemed that you know something that people did in the workplace and I just needed to find some kind of way of communicating with others I also found that by doing the lessons then I started to be able to receive information from other people I felt connected I was going out every Saturday and playing with a couple of guys that I had done the lessons with and it it was a really good way of just starting to engage in conversation again and particularly felt like engaging in a professional conversation going forward. The third goal was to learn to sail. So this was my third year. My third goal was to learn to sail. When I was younger, my friend's father built a boat in their backyard and when I needed time out, I used to go sit there and I would look at the boat and I would wonder about whether it would sink, whether it would float, what countries it would go to. It was kind of like my happy space. And one afternoon, my friend's dad brought us to Dunleary in Dublin and put us on a boat and it was great fun. And at the end of the day, he mentioned to my father that he thought maybe they should take me to a yacht club, that there might be something there. Now, that never happened. My parents didn't take me sailing, um, but I did remember that. And through my 20s, I had some experiences going out on boats and I always enjoyed them. And over time, people would continually say, maybe you should go learn to sail. Maybe you might enjoy doing this. And so it had become a bit of 
something I really wanted to do, didn't quite know how to go about doing it. And also, if I really love something that much, considering the amount of loss I'd gone through, I wasn't sure I wanted to put myself out there. So maybe reflect on that. What is something you would love to do that the fear of humiliation, of rejection is holding you back? You'd rather not do something that you might love because other people might take it away from you. I didn't want to have my heart broken anymore, so I was very hesitant about this third goal. However, I recognised that I needed to find the courage within myself to align to what I knew that was ultimately going to make me happy. So in my new job, there was a yacht club or a dinghy sailing club. And every Thursday during the summer, they would come together. So one Thursday evening, I got my guts up, I got my courage up. And I just thought, you know what, if they reject me, if I feel humiliated, well, at least I've given it a go. I've given it a try. And that will be that will be that. Now, I needn't have worried. Um, I had an amazing night. And that night I was asked, would I like to go the following week? down to try sailing in a small regatta in the Isle of Wight. And from there, I never looked back. In that first trip to the Isle of Wight, I ended up sailing with one of the managing directors from my company, an experienced sailor. And I was very nervous of him the night before. I was thinking this could all go horribly wrong and I might lose my job and then what will happen to me? But I needn't have worried either because it was like, water off a duck's back. I was back into my normal self. I was very happy out in the boat all day and he took me into a room at the end of the day and he put me in front of a mirror and there for the first time in a very very long time I saw a woman I hadn't seen for a long time who was smiling, who was happy, who was in her element and he encouraged me from that moment to start to engage more with the sailing to continue with the dinghy sailing and then for the following year to get onto bigger boats and that's exactly the course of action I did and by 2012 I was learning to navigate race boats I found an avenue that I could put my mind my heart my body into that was going to bring me into alignment and also benefit me people started to show up they started to encourage me I was moving in a direction that made me incredibly happy and I was starting to really navigate my own path. Through sailing, I found a language, I found a community and it taught me to be present in the moment and to just be me. So by 2012, I was ticking all the boxes. I was a director in the city, I was earning loads of cash and I was indulging my passion for sailing. Yet through my passion for sailing, I started to recognise that things weren't all in alignment. While being on the boats at weekends, I was starting to have a different perspective on problems. I was sharing my skills and knowledge there was more of a community building we were winning races I was speaking more authentic truth over time within my corporate career I was starting to become a bit more anxious I was becoming increasingly less confident and I was starting to feel overwhelmed so much so that one morning I was found crying on a race boat refusing to go sailing because I was just too tired And so I made a decision that I needed to stop. I needed to pause, that my well-being was more important than my corporate um, existence, that I needed to put myself first. I'd had three jobs in three years and I wasn't quite sure where I was navigating to. So instead of continuing down the road, I decided that my well-being needed to be prioritised. And so I decided to stop. So I took a decision to resign from my job and I was very fortunate to be able to do so. In sailing, the most important lesson that I learned was that if you do not know where you are, you need to pause the boat. You need to stop the boat. I'm not asking you to quit or resign your job. I'm just asking that you take time to pause and to get present about where you are and reflect on what is working for you and what is not working for you. To be able to plot a course, to be able to plot an intention, we need to know where we are. Whether that's positive or negative, it's just choices, but we need to know where we are. 
And it's also being assured that it is okay to stop, that it's okay to question and to figure out your personal intentions, that your well-being is your responsibility. And without knowing our position, then how are we going to plot the course to our intention? I resigned from my job and I came home and I sat on my bed and I went, mind, body and spirit, we're a team. And the first team we've got to learn to lead is oneself. I am my responsibility. It's my responsibility to look after my well-being. It's my responsibility to make sure my happiness happens in the world. My business, my career, it's all a reflection of who I am because I could see that I could change things about myself or not, we're perfectly imperfect. But what I had to recognize was I was choosing or making choices to put myself in environments that weren't aligning to the truth of who I was, they weren't aligning to my well being. And it was my responsibility to start to navigate a healthier course for myself. To be successful in life, we must strive to be successful in ourselves. It's getting to know ourselves individually. And it's about having fun. I was recognising I was having more fun on boats every weekend than I was having in my corporate career. And I wanted my life to be more about having fun, about having happiness, to feel safe and secure, to feel that I am the navigator of my own ship. I wanted freedom and I wanted peace of mind. When one starts to recognize the power to create comes from within. We are born creators. And this is not about having power over people. This is about having the power to be able to create our own reality. It is our personal responsibility to tap into our own personal truths, to create and bring our own authentic voice out into the world. It is about creating and following our inner compass, our hearts. So now it's time for your story. So what led you to this course? What is the change you would like to see? What is your intention for the future? How is that intention come about? Why do you want that change in your life? What is your inspiration? What has inspired you to come onto this course, to set this story, to want to move forward and make those changes? Hamilton states that telling a story is our way of sharing memories, lessons learned and our values. Stories carry memorable meaning and information. They are psychologically powerful and they become self-fulfilling. So the story that we tell ourselves can make it succeed or fail. So in relation to your intention, I want you to succeed. So what is the story that is going to psychologically support you to that success? The story will feel authentic and it will feel true because it is positive. It's about transforming yourself. It's about being inspiring. It's about inspiring yourself. And you will want it repeated back to you time and time again. The act of retelling an old story in a new way will redefine the language, it redefines the purpose of the intention, whether you are looking to change something in your business, your entrepreneurial venture or your personal path, the story that will inspire you to want to follow through with your intentions is one of the first key tools for you to explore in setting your intentions. So again, bringing you back to where we began of what brought you to this course? What would you like to reflect on? What is your heartfelt intention? What have you done in the past that you would like to do differently in the future? This is the story that is going to set the framework to inspire you to not only set your intentions, to follow through on your intentions. So in this short video, I talked about Grown Whale's story of inspiration. I've shared with you my story that brought me to develop and create the map. It's now time for you to reflect on your story and to take time to look at your story in terms of what brought you to this course. This is about getting out of our heads and into our hearts and the truth of who we are. 
when we have a good story, we have good inspiration. So when challenges arise on the road ahead, we'll feel motivated to learn from those challenges, to take those lessons and to move forward towards our intention. So in the next video, I'm going to start to talk about what an intention is and how we can create intention.